Hello! Welcome to Get Real 2000. The title of this, and it's number 45, and the title is Free Fall. Free Fall. When we ended our ongoing chronological study in the Gospels last week, number 44, <laughs> Jesus had told his disciples that he was the bread of eternal life and everyone should eat his flesh and his blood. And with this, the free fall started. <laughs> with this, most walked away from him. His disciples, the other people walked away, but even his disciples that had been following him and got fed. We added that uh, the teaching reminded us of the saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Have you heard that one before? That's probably old school. Now we begin with Jesus turning to ask an important question of those 12 disciples who were scratching their heads and decide to stick around. The New Living Translation, John 6, 67. Okay, it says in John 6, 67, Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you going to leave too? 68. Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? <laughs> you alone have the words that give eternal life. We believe them and know that you are the, the Holy One of God, 70. Then Jesus said, I chose the 12 of you, but one is a devil, 71. He is speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, one of the 12 who would betray him. So Jesus actually chose his betrayer. It wasn't that the remaining 12 disciples didn't fear him, that they didn't leave, but that Jesus had handpicked them, the 12, to stay out of the thousands of the followers that were there. Even picked one to fulfill the work of betraying him. And they believed him. In order for him to be crucified for our sins, at just the right time. Today, some of us may wonder why we ended up where we have ended, in one ministry or another, or married or not married or whatever. But God calls us, and from the beginning has prepared work for us to do. New Living Translation, Ephesians 2, 10, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Judas Iscariot was an ordinary man. He was a genuinely chosen and empowered apostle. He, began, he became the trusted treasurer of the disciples and he was a preacher and a healer. Who would have thought that he would become a thief and an adversary against Jesus? Who would have believed that he would betray Christ for 30 pieces of silver? Jesus did. <laughs> because everything Judas did was foreshadowed all the way back in the Old Testament by, well here's one, by Prophet Zechariah. New Living Translation, Zechariah 11:12. It says, and I said to them, if you like, give me wages, whatever I'm worth, but only if you want to. So they counted out for my wages 30 pieces of silver, 30 pieces of silver, 13. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potters, this magnificent sum at, at which they valued me. So I took the 30 coins and threw them to the potters in the temple of the Lord, which we read that Jesus did. Fact is that God is in everything we do and might do. He is our hearts, he is in our hearts, knowing everything about us. We take God with us into everything we do. You can't leave him at the babysitters. <laughs> he just doesn't state it. New Living Translation, Proverbs 15, 11. even the depths 
of death and destruction are known by God. That's Hades. How much more does he know the human heart? New Living Translation Jeremiah 23:24 says, Can anyone hide from me? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and earth? Asked the Lord. And in New Living Translation Amos 9:3, it says, Even if they hide at the top of Mount Carmel, I will search them out and capture them. Even if they hide at the bottom of the ocean, I will send the great sea serpent after them to bite and destroy them. So Peter was right when he said to Jesus in John 6:68, 6, he said, Lord, to whom would we go? <laughs> You're everywhere. But we are always encouraged as Christians. Paul writes to the Romans in New Living Translation, Romans 8, 27, and says, And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Harmony in harmony with God's own will. Tradition condemned. As Mark takes over the teaching for a while, the attention focuses back to tradition. Tradition. One of my, my pet peeves, I guess, today. This next part takes place in spring A.D. 29. New Living Translation, Mark 7, 1, says, One day, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law arrived from Jerusalem to confront Jesus. Two, they noticed that some of Jesus' disciples failed to follow the usual Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. Three, the Jews, especially the Pharisees, did not eat until they had poured water over their cupped hands as required by their ancient traditions for Similarly, they ate nothing but from the market unless they had immersed their hands in water. This is but one of many traditions they have clung to, it says, such as their ceremony of washing cups, pitchers, and kettles. Five. So the Pharisees and teachers of religious law asked him, why don't your disciples follow our age-old customs, for they eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony. 6. Jesus replied, You hypocrites! <laughs> Isaiah was prophesying about you when he said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. They worship. Their worship is a farce. For they replace God's commands with their own man-made teachings. What are we doing today? Our own man-made teachings. Six or nine. Then he said, you reject God's laws in order to hold on to your own traditions. Your own traditions. Ten. For instance, for instance, he's telling them something they know now. For instance, Moses gave you this law from God, honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks evil of father or mother must be put to death. Moses gave you this law, it says, 11. But you say, it is all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you, for I have vowed to give to God what I could have given to you, their money and everything else, their attention. Twelve, you let them disregard their needy parents. Thirteen, as such you break the law of God in order to protect your own tradition. Tradition. <laughs> and this is only one example. He says this is only one example. There are many, many others. Jesus replies to this church tradition situation by calling them a bunch of hypocrites. They were like we are today. 
In fact, losing our everyday, minute-to-minute relationship with God, our first love, in order to satisfy whatever traditions handed down to our particular denominations or whatever, or what our own board of directors have recently established as laws and customs for the church. We teach loudly that the Bible tells us that God requires sacrifice even at the expense of truth. Sacrifice. That's from the Old Testament. But even when we can get back to God's teaching in the Old Testament, we see something different. New Living Translation Hosea, Prophet Hosea 6, 6. It says, I want you to be merciful. I don't want your sacrifices. I want you to know God. That's more important than burnt offerings. All the stuff and programs we do as a church means little to God. When it cancels out our spontaneous response using the fruit of the Spirit, have you heard of that? That's in the Bible. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Sadly, I see little of this at work these days within our Christian organizations or even in their tolerance in the world as far as politics and love. New Living Translation, Ephesians 4.23. Instead, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and your attitudes. 24. You must display a new nature because you are a new person, created in God's likeness, righteous, holy, and true. So much for tradition. In the Old Testament, Isaiah writes a new international version this time, Isaiah 48 or 43, 18. It says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. We might say here, do not dwell on tradition. <laughs> Seems we're talking about it. We should be seeking God day by day for direction and new and better ways, and mostly just to trust God from day to day. When we are occupied with Jesus from day to day, the thought never occurs to just look back at tradition because Jesus is always moving forward. He's always going forward since he's singing a new song. But see, isn't it true that during uncertainty and trials, when we're wondering which way to turn, we suddenly remember, ah, that we're Christians. <laughs> and God said in that proverb, he would make our paths straight. He will do it. But sometimes we forget the rest of that proverb. Proverb 3, 5 to 6. Proverb 3, 5 to 6. Memorize that if you haven't. That in order to get our paths straight, we must trust in the Lord with all our hearts. So we're moving forward. And how does our path stay straight? Is to trust the Lord with all of our hearts. We can't say, well, I don't know if God is really hearing me, so I better do something of my own, or that is traditional before it's too late. <laughs> can't say that. When we respond like this, we are only trusting God with part of our hearts, not all of our hearts. And then the proverb says, lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. This is a tough one. We soon panic and totally space out. We are like in free fall. <laughs> There's the title of our message. We are in free fall. We panic. We start grabbing at straws. We might try things we never believed in before or beliefs that somebody has thrown our way. I have a picture of a, a rock climber in my room that says, just when you think it's a lost cause, Christ will perform a miracle. 
when you're in free fall, you think it's a lost cause, Christ will perform a miracle. When this finally happens, do we ever think of how foolish we were not to trust him with all our hearts, right from the beginning? This, give it to him. Hand it to God. Probably not. So what should we do during that free fall of panic when our personal life is ceasing? <laughs> this would take us to the last part of that proverb. It says, acknowledge God in all our ways. In everything we do, everything we say or think, take Him wherever we go. He already knows. He's already going to be there with us. We might as well enjoy Him being here even now with us as we're talking and sharing these scriptures. Then He will make our path straight. God has a plan for each one of us, and plans are always found in tomorrow. So let us keep hoping, seeking, praying, and stepping out in faith. Just stepping out because we believe that we believe. Knowing that our trust in God will unfold a plan that we never dreamed possible. See you next time. Now I live in all your promises And nothing seems worthwhile Except to be in your kingdom of love, my Lord.